It says Veronica produces thingamabobs in two plants. The cost in plant A is given by 10 plus 0.5 QA plus 0.05 QA squared, where the fixed cost component is sunk. So we've already paid that $10. There's no way we can avoid paying it. The cost in plant B is given by 20 plus 0.25 QB if the plant is in production. Otherwise, the cost is zero. So in other words, that fixed cost of $20 is not sunk. So we can avoid paying that $20 if we don't bring plant B onto production. It says if 15 units are produced, how much should be produced in plant B to minimize cost? Well, like we said, that since the fixed cost in plant B is not sunk, we can avoid incurring it if we don't bring the plant into production. So we need to compare the situation where we only use plant A to the situation where we use both plants. So only in plant A, we're gonna plug 15 into our total cost for plant A. We work this out and we see in only in plant A, it's gonna cost us 28.75. Notice we've included that $10 fixed cost here. So even though that cost is already sunk, we've included it in our total cost. And this is gonna play an important role, so pay attention why. If we use both plants, we need to find out what the distribution of output would be across both plants. So we do this by setting the marginal cost of plant A equal to the marginal cost of plant B. We do this, we work through it and solve, and we get QA equals negative 2.5. So we find that QA is a negative number. This means if we were to bring plant B online, we would produce everything in plant B and nothing in plant A. So this is gonna happen from time to time. You may see you get a negative number or zero, and that, that's, that's no accident. That's saying that for any level of output, if we do bring plant B online, it's gonna be more, it's gonna be cheaper to produce all of that output in plant B than it would be to produce in plant A. So by getting a negative number here, we know we're gonna produce zero in plant A. If we do find it, it's beneficial to bring plant B online. So that's what we need to do now. We have to check whether or not bringing plant B online and producing all 15 units in plant B is cheaper than the 2875, which is what we what we found it would cost us to produce all 15 units in plant A. So we say the cost of 15 units for plant B, and now pay attention here, we have 10 plus 20 plus 0.25 times 15. So we've added that $10 fixed cost that we added in plant A's cost function. The reason is, is because no matter what we're incurring that cost. So if we were to add it to plant A's fixed cost function, or total cost function, that fixed component of $10, we must also add it to plant B's total cost function. And we see that that gives us 33.75. So again, you wanna notice that $10 fixed cost from plant A is added to plant B's total cost because this cost is sunk, so we have already incurred it, even if we only use plant B. This is the correct way to think about it, but you can also think about it like this. If you ignore plant A's $10 fixed cost from the start, we get that the cost of producing 15 units is 18.75. Then we can ignore plant A's fixed cost again for plant B, and we'd see that that cost is 23.75. In either case, we're gonna produce all 15 units in plant A and zero units in plant B. So again, you can do that two ways. You can either ignore the fixed cost from plant A and take it out of the total cost function, or you can add it to both plants total cost function because you are incurring it no matter what. But either way, you're gonna get the same answer. And in this case, it's zero in plant B and all units in plant A, all 15 units.